Walworth and his wife this morning. Let's give him a clap. Good to have you here with us. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. You may say something different before the day's done. <laughs> or you'll say something different before the day's done. One or the other, huh? And we want to welcome Eileen and Mark back there. Let's welcome them. Okay. Uh, announcements for today. Anybody have an announcement this morning to make? Yes, Lisa. I finally got my appointment. You did! Yay! <laughs> Which one is that? Which appointment is that? With a consultant with my surgeon. All right. Okay. Good. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yes. 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 Tuesday is Women's Bible Study at 10 o'clock. Welcome, all the ladies. Come on down to McDonald's and uh, and have a Bible study and a get together and a yak yak. We just have a good time. <laughs> Wednesday's Bible study is 7 o'clock and we are going through the Chosen. It will be the third uh, epi <coughs> episode. 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 Yes. I get series and episodes mixed up, but episode. And it was. It's just a fantastic put together. They've done an awesome job. Um, any other? We have, um, I want to tell you that we had a very successful benefit for Carrie Friday night. We had a lot of auction products. A lot of them, uh, we had one, two, three, four tables full of auction products. We had a nice potluck carry-in plus uh, Eric and Sean Kinsey had a great time grilling hot dogs and hamburgers. Thank you for that. And uh, we just had good fellowship. People, some people from the community came in. Um, a lot of people from church came in to support her. And I just want to thank you. We don't have a final count of money yet. It's still coming in. So um, hopefully by next Sunday I'll have a account of what we brought in for her, but um, it was a good night, good night. Um, and thank you, everyone who participated, helped. Yes, Keith? I'm thankful to be here without a limp or a concussion. <laughs> you're, thankful to be, you're thankful to be here without a limp or a concussion from Friday night. Would you explain that for me, please? <laughs> You sat on my lap, but what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, so to fill you in a little bit, is Keith saw some friends that he hadn't seen for a while. So he's over in the corner talking. And um, I come in with an announcement about the auction and, and, and how, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Keith was back there talking. So I said, Keith Valentine, you need to stop your talking. It went on and on and on. <laughs> and he kept talking. He didn't understand. And so I just looked at him and I said, Keith, you need to come up here, being the teacher in him, you know, and everything. He's just talking away. You need to come up here and sit down in your chair. And he says, what if I don't want to? <laughs> anyway, so he went on. And uh, finally got his attention. Finally got his attention by just looking at him and said, Keith. Pointing at me. Yes, pointing at you and said, Keith, sit down. Come sit down. And he said, I don't want to. And so I just stared at him. And he finally sat down. Well, I went and sat on his lap. And he's just like, oh boy. <laughs> So we've had a good time, and we're going to go into the movies together. We're going to have a movie. Yeah, we're going to make a movie. But you had to be there to appreciate that. You just had to be there. It was hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to this. Um, so our announcements. Um, I think we fulfilled. Yes, Janet. You have those things to pass around for the bazaar. They're out by the Sharon. Sharon has them? No, she hasn't announced all the right there. They're right there. There's some on there. Right there. Thank you. Yeah, some right yes. There. I have more uh, clipboards for Cookies, Crafts, and Lace Bazaar 
for helpers, and I have a bake sale for the bazaar. We're having a bake sale. Our bazaar is September 7th, and it's here at the church, and we need helpers to come. Uh, contact Janet for any other information that you might ask for and want. So I'm going to pass these around this morning. And you can either bake for the bake sale or you can be a helper. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Yes, Jackie. What time is that? The bazaar is 10 to 3. 10 to 3. <laughs> yep. Here at the church? Yes, here at the church. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, birthdays. I'm oh, sorry. Chuck. Mine is next Thursday. I'll be 80, 80 years old. And my kids say I'm Asian. They call me Asian. And my grandson, you know, uh, Joshua, calls me Asian. Asian. I said, Joshua, you better be careful because I'm the only one you got. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He said, That's okay, now. I love you anyway. You can be a little some dinosaurs. Good. 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 Yeah, that's cute. <coughs> Anybody else have a birthday? Chuck, yep. Yeah. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday. There's 20 of you. 
I don't know how many in the congregation are a member. Somebody counting? Yeah. All right, so it looks like the people have spoken. We will uh, be very diligent and looking just like we had in the past. One thing is, this committee wants to do it right. We don't want to get ahead of God in any way. We don't want to push anything forward. We're listening to what the Lord has to say to us. It's going to take us a couple more months. We can hire an interim pastor, or I can keep calling on the pastors that have come and served. Any comments? Keep. Did we do something wrong, or? No, what? no, we did not do anything wrong. The committee, we listened to what all of you had to say, and you had requested maybe a pastor could come and, and give a second preaching. You'd like to hear a second time. Several of you have stepped forward and asked that question. So as the committee met, we as a committee had decided to ask those three candidates to come and preach again for the people of the church. And we also gave them a 14 questionnaire on their personal doctrine with their relationship with the Lord. Well, I had one, Doug Tindall right away had responded and said, take his name off of consideration. Blair didn't get the email, and because he didn't respond, nor did Roger. So we asked Blair today what the situation was, and for various reasons, he has withdrawn. So that's what happened. And I apologized to Doug Tendall that we as a committee apologized. There was no malice intended. There were several people in the church that asked for them to come back for a second time and if he would fill this, doc this document out. And he took side with that. I told him that we apologized if we offended him. He emailed me back, but I did not respond to that email. He needed to say a few things to me, and that's fine. That's okay. But here we are. We're square one again. And all three of the candidates got the same email. And Doug Tindall is the only one that responded to that email. So we can still have different pastors come in and preach on different Sundays. Uh, of course, Blair's here. When he's here, we can always have him step in and bring a message as well. Or we can call for an interim pastor. And then when a candidate, when it's time for the candidates to come and preach, then we ask the interim pastor to step down and, and let the candidate preach. Sharon, after uh, the question, I have uh, a second time. Do, do we vote on them? Yes, we will vote. We're looking at a voting period when we find three, four, two, I mean, hopefully, I don't know when that's going to come, when we vote, but we will vote. Chuck? Do you think maybe the questionnaire might have, uh, they might have taken issue with the questionnaire? They may have taken issue with that. They may have taken an issue with, you already heard me once, you got uh, my resume and all my details. So like I'm not coming back. I wasn't here. Pardon me? I would like to have because I wasn't here. It could have been a number of things. Yeah. Could have been interfering with your schedules. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, everything, anything could have happened. But I'm not going to stand. I've already apologized to right. Doug Tindall. Uh, he and his wife have other things going on, and it would have interfered with his schedule. But many a times you have to come back for a second interview, and it was kind of set. It was never, you know, there. There, are, I've been to jobs where people do two and three interviews. You have to go up in front of many people, so I don't think it was unreasonable to ask him to no. ask, to preach it to us a second time. I mean, you just have to. And there are times when you interview for a job, 
the uh, person that's interviewing you, like in a CAD program when you're in a, in a surveying company. Um, this kind of program is they take a, a lay of the land or a structure and they put it in this program and it comes out nice and pretty. It's the same thing. Before you get hired, you have to pre prevent, uh, you have to present yourself as you knowing and understand what a CAD program is or Excel program or a Word document program. They want you to do something with the computer to prove that you know what you're doing. So, but what this document was, it was all about personal information and they were supposed to back it up with scripture. But not like personal about themselves. It's like foot washing, things about the church, you know, that go with it. It wasn't like personal about themselves, just like what is your shoe size? It was more about doctrine. Yeah, it was all about doctrine. So that's where yes. we are. They didn't, I don't know, they didn't like it. They felt insulted. I had no idea, but I know I felt kind of put back with Doug. It's like we insulted him to challenge him. Um, they were all challenged to come back and do a second sermon. So that's where we are, church, and we're doing the best that we can. Yeah. Yeah. It's what choices. Two months down the road before we have a uh, could be. full time there. Yeah, it could be. It's on the Lord's timing, Janet. For, oh, yeah. I'll be right with you, Jane. It's on the Lord's timing. It's not ours. That's right. We're very diligent in checking the emails in our advertising. We'll go back to the same kind of advertising we did before. <clears throat> we were rather successful. We had some great preachers come through that. So, yeah. God's will be done. Yeah, Jane? Well, I was wondering if Roger and his wife would consider being an interim pastor. Cause I kind of like having someone that kind of knows us. I mean, have they considered asking them if they want to be an agent last year? Well, the committee will consider that. We'll take that under advisement. Yes. Yep. Any other questions? I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. And it's a high job. Well, it is. And, and it's coming together in one accord. The unity of this committee is remarkable. We, we're all in agreement, whatever is suggested, we all agree upon it, or if we're not, then we go back to say, okay, let's rethink this, let's talk it through, what's another plan to go forward? So it's not about us, it's all about you. It's all about God. And God, yeah. But you as the church are the ones that's gonna have to be satisfied with the preach that we get. This isn't a part-time <coughs> six-month gig, this is for for a long, long, long time. So, church, are we in agreement? You guys want us to start over? Yes. I think we ought to give these people a good hand. Sometimes it doesn't turn out the way we think it should, but I, I think they deserve everything that we back them for. We just want to lift you up in prayer this morning. And this is a heavy thing. That we think our, everything is in a row and things are looking good and then there's a glitch. And this isn't forever glitch. This is just what we're going to count on you. And we're thanking you right now for all that you're going to prepare a pastor for Oakley Community Church. You know who he is, who they are. You know all about them already. You've got them all picked up. Help us to be patient in waiting on you. And we give you all the praise and the thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Let's stand and sing our pledges this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified and risen and coming again with life and liberty.
the first thought in our mind is where I'm going to go to you, Lord. Wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. How you doing back here? Charlie Nolf was there. Oh. Yes. 
that with assistance, the parents helped him walk up on the field. Oh. We were all in tears. Um, we, he sat on the ground, which is very hard for him to do, but he sat with his team, oh. and Daniel reported that he is going to start back to join uh, there on Friday for two classes. For two classes. He still needs prayer because he's got ways to go, but God is good. It would never happen without God there. So, amen. Yes, amen. Oh, my goodness. What's his first name again? Charlie. Charlie. Lord, we thank you how you have been healing Charlie. We thank you, Lord, for your power of healing. Lord, through this, this boy is going to be a different boy. And he's going to live for you. I just believe and thank you, Lord, for what you're going to anoint him on his life. Amen. 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 I just, the body is an amazing healer. God can do anything. And, you know, when the doctors years ago told my mother that I would never walk again, and my mother said, you don't know my daughter. <laughs> and we don't know what Charlie can do. And that body of his is going to be just an amazing <coughs> testimony for God. We just thank you. He was almost dead. Yeah, they told him he would never walk. The mom never, never no. walk, never do anything. No. That he... Just amazing. Yes. yes. Amen. Just, yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Jane. Well, I'm not sure if this is a praise or concern, but my doctor called me and said I'm having back problems, I had kidney problems, I bruised my kidneys when I was pushed. Um, and they're nice and pretty colors on the outside. I don't know what they look like on the inside, but I'm not nearly as much pain as I've been. I thank God for that. So I guess it's both a, a praise and a concern. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carrie called me this morning and um, pray for her. She's having muscle spasms throughout her body from head to toe. And she doesn't know whether that's part of the chemo. She's going to be calling the doctor in the morning to see what's going on. And, um, yeah, I don't know if it's a side effect or one of the side effects. But, yes, Jackie. My stomach's been hurting again. Your stomach's been hurting again? Let's pray for Jackie's stomach. Okay. Anybody else? Let's stand. Oh, right, right. 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 oh, oh, oh. Pastor John probably won't like this. Oh, dear. But he, at some time in June, had a silent heart attack. Uh-oh. And some damage. And he's going through heart rehab right now. And he has AFib that uh, gives him problems. So please just keep Pastor John in your prayers. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Let's... Um, what can we do together? We're going to um, pray. And Pastor John, follow me. <laughs> I got enough problems. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pray over you this morning. Amen. Yes. We're going to pray over you. Yes. Everybody, let's come and gather around Pastor John. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful, first of all, that Pastor John and his wife could be here at church this morning to provide supply to the pulpit. Lord, we know how much we enjoy his sermons, enjoy his friendship here at church, and how much we enjoy his messages. Lord, we are saddened to hear about his cardiac issues. Lord, we know that you are the great physician and that you can heal all. And Lord, even though it sounds like a simple request, it's not always so simple. But we ask that you be with the doctors, the surgeons. Lord, we know Pastor John is a spiritual man, one who loves Jesus. 
and we ask that that love remain steadfast during yes. these challenging yes. health periods and issues. Yes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.
that aren't eating right and that are not having food, even though we are offerings in our community. And so we're just thankful for our food programs that we have every other Tuesday and once a month at our food truck here. How many families did we serve yesterday? It was about 191 or more. 191. It's a lot of families. Okay, Walt and I are going to sing for you this morning. Um, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Amen. One way or another, we're going to see him. Did you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> Son of Nun, Moses' assistant, 
Moses, my servant is dead. And now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all of the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the, the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Uh, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready, three days from now you will cross the Jordan, and go in to take the possession of the land the Lord your God is giving to you. Verse 16. And then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us to do, and wherever you send us, we'll go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so will we obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Now, there's something about we're not going out to possess a land, I don't think. But we need to go out and possess some things in our life. Maybe that the Lord has given us, that the Lord has encouraged us, uh, even, to, even to possess our health, our well-being, uh, even to possess the next pastor that comes along. Uh, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, the Lord has said to Abram, to your offspring, I will give this land. And so he built an altar, altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. You see, approximately 500 years after giving of the promise, Abraham's seed uh, stand on the banks of the Jordan, waiting to go over and possess that which God had promised to them. They remembered that their fathers had received the same opportunity 40 years before that. And because of a majority vote, be careful of those majority votes, uh, they had wandered around in the wilderness wasting precious time. And now they were again being offered the land that God had promised would be theirs. Before they went into the promised land, a tremendous event took place. God spoke to Joshua. So I think we need to be constantly bearing in mind that it's always an event of great importance when God speaks to us. Amen. Joshua was a new leader to the people, and before he could lead the people into the promised land, there were certain conditions to be met. And you know what? There are certain similarities in the life of the Christian. I wouldn't suggest that many years have been wasted in wandering around in, in your wilderness experience. But there's much ahead of every one of us that needs to be possessed. And, and the points I, I wish to draw to your attention are these. Now, don't panic. There's 13 of them. <laughs> and I'm going to go through every one of them. I don't care if you're sitting here whining and crying and ready to go to bed. I'm going to do it. It's what God laid on my heart, and I'm going to do it. That's right. So the points I wish to draw your attention to is there must be a call. Yes, yes. Verse 1 of what I read, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun. God spoke directly to Joshua. Joshua had previously learned to recognize the voice of the Lord. If he had worked 
very closely with Moses. And now he had a personal call. You know, there's many general calls in, in life, in God's Word, that we may all, all apply to our own lives. But it's only when we've heard the Word of the Lord for ourselves that we can stand the great pressures that, that come upon us as we seek to fulfill that call, whatever it is. Remember he spoke to the disciples, Mark 16, verse 15. Then he said to them, you must go out into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. He's talking about us. And he spoke to Philip in Acts chapter 8, verse 26. He said, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. A lot of stuff going on in Gaza right now, isn't there? And then again, in Acts chapter 9, verses 5 and 6, talking to Paul. He said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. And then he replied, now go, get up and go into the city and you'll be told what to do. So, first there must be a call. And then there must be a commencement. He said, get ready to cross the Jordan River. You know, we can, we can hold committee meetings, we can have ministerial seminars, uh, lectures on evangelism, but nothing will be accomplished unless and until we rise up and go forward. We can know it all, and I know a lot of people who think they know it all, <laughs> and still do nothing. The task must be started or it will never get finished. Jordan was a barrier to the blessings of, of, of the people. They needed to take positive action and cross the river. That's the only way that they could, could know the full blessing of the Lord. I know I'm throwing out a lot of scripture here to you, but if, if, uh, if you own a pencil, it might be helpful to write it down. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, but, but since we belong to the day, let us not be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a help. So, there must be a call, there must be a commencement, and number three, there must be concord or harmony if you will in agreement with the people that uh, they would stand up to, to what's coming against them in verse 2 he says you and all the people Joshua couldn't accomplish the task on his own, on his own not even with the help of his old friend Caleb who was also very full of faith it needed the unity Word, needed the unity of the people. Things happen when God's people unite together. Yes. The mighty Holy Spirit came and filled the waiting disciples when they were with one accord. One accord. The land could only be possessed by a united people. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 says, make every effort to keep the unity of, of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And in John chapter 17, uh, verse 23, Jesus is speaking and he says, I in them and you in me, talking to the Father, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them. So that's three. Now, number four, I'm going pretty 
fast. Maybe I should slow down. <laughs> there must be a conviction. I use the word conviction here in the sense that we must have a conviction of the absolute truthfulness of God's word. Verse 2, into the land I am about to give them. Before they started, there needed to be a conviction in their hearts that God meant what he said. I wonder, do we, do we, do we really believe what God says in his word? Yes, we are supposed to. Three amens. Hmm, one, two, three, four. <laughs> um, <clears throat> James chapter 2, verse 17. It isn't enough to just have faith. Faith that doesn't show itself in good deeds and by good deeds is no faith at all. Amen. The scripture says it's dead and useless. Yes, 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 yes. But here again, believing was not just enough. Number four. Or number five, excuse me, I don't want to go backwards here. You guys are getting mad at me as it is. Number five, there must be a claiming. Verse three, I will give you every place where you set your foot. They needed to start placing their feet on the land, saying, this is ours. Because God promised them. Yes, yes. God's promises are fulfilled to us as we're willing to step out and stand on them in faith. Now there also, in, in, in number six, there must be a calculating. Verse four, I'm giving you every square inch of land you set your foot on. I take that out of the message. God had, had made clear what was to be there. Israel had not yet possessed the land, the promised land, to the fullest extent. But they could see the fulfillment of the promise. So I wonder, have we possessed all that God has in store for us? We need to press on and claim what is still to be possessed. Yeah, yeah. Number seven, there must be a confidence. In verse five, it says, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Our confidence must be correctly placed, not in our strength or our own ability, but our, our confidence must be placed in the Lord and in the sure fulfillment of his word. Number eight, there must be courage. Yes, courage. yes. Verse six says, courage. be strong and courageous. You know, Joshua was very aware that there were giants in the land. He'd seen them. He knew that the enemy was strong. Amen. And he had seen the fortified cities. He'd been there. And he would need courage. Yes. But didn't he have the promise of the Lord that he would divide the land to the people? You know, that was good enough for Joshua. God's word is sure, the promises will be fulfilled. Amen. May not be today, may not be next week, but the promise is sure. Yes, I guess. Praise the Lord. Number nine, there must be a compliance. Verse seven says, be careful to obey all the law. If we expect God to bless us, and generally we do, then we must comply with his divine requirements. It's no use going our own way. 
and then complaining to God that he's not blessing us. There must be obedience to the revealed word of God. That way it ensures us of his blessing. God generally, at least in my life, takes me forward increment by increment, step by step. When we're obedient to what he's shown us. And then he'll show us what the next step is to take. This is a, a, a basic principle in the path of blessing. <coughs> now, number 10. See, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Only 13 now. <laughs> number 10. There must be a commitment. Verse 7. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. If we really want all that God has for us, then we must give all that we have to Him. Amen. Total right. abandonment of self to God's revealed will for our lives. <laughs> Going God's way when he shows us the way forward and obeying God's voice when he speaks to us without any reservation at all. Just do it. The thrill of about such a life is that it leads us to an inner relationship between us and the Almighty God. It brings us into a new kind of, of relationship yeah. where we're able to commune with each other. Number 11. There must be a communion. Verse 8 says, Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. If we want to know anything, if we want to learn anything, we must allow God to speak to us. Yes, that's correct. And actively listen for his voice. And then we must apply what he says to our hearts and also to our lives. Mm -hmm. The scripture tells us that we need to, to store up that word in our hearts and live out the word in our lives daily. Do we regularly commune with God? Hmm. Are we so busy that we have no time for prayer? That's a double. Hmm. And if that's the case, I'm going to tell you something. We are too busy. We're too busy. Yeah. Oh. And I, and I wonder, I'm, I'm a, uh, a chief uh, one of these. When we pray, do we do all the talking? Yes. Boy, I find myself yeah. many times. Oh. Hey, this is God. Could I just have one moment with you? <laughs> Do we give the Lord a time to talk to us? Oh. Help us. Help us. Yes. If we fulfill these conditions in our lives, our lives will be greatly enriched yes. and there will be victory in our lives. Number 12, there must be a conquest. Verse 8 says, Then you will be prosperous and successful. The New King James Version says it this way. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. 
I want you to take particular uh, note of the words in this New King James Version. You will make your way prosperous. God has laid down certain principles for spiritual prosperity. It's in our own power to be spiritually prosperous. God has already shown us the way. It's the way of obedience to his voice. It's the way of total commitment to his will. Here they are on the banks of the River Jordan and they couldn't possess the promised land unless they crossed the Jordan. So, number 13, you're probably glad to hear that, aren't you? <laughs> there must be a choice. Verse 16 says, Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we'll do. And wherever you send us, we'll go. Forty years earlier, that same, that same opportunity had been presented to their fathers. And they had rejected it. I believe the main reason for rejecting the opportunity to possess the promised land at that time was fear of what they could see in their eyes. And this took a priority over the promise given to them by the Lord. And so now they had to make up their own minds, not rely on the past, and determine in their own hearts that they would believe God for themselves. And so they possessed the promised land. Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. This is what he says. One thing I do, letting go of those things which are past and stretching out to the things which are before. I go forward to the mark, even to the reward of the high purpose of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Now I'm winding down, and I know you're happy. Uh, <laughs> Joshua, remember, had pro uh, uh, previous, previously seen the land. He'd seen the giants, but he remembered the grapes, remembered the sweetness of the grapes. I went to the grocery store just, just early last evening, and uh, uh, I snitched a grape before I bought any, wiped it off real good so that I didn't think there any cooties on it. <laughs> and I slipped that right in, and uh, that is so sweet. I'm going to buy some of them, which I did, which I did. He remembered the grapes. He took into account, remember, he took into account that the people were mighty. But then again, he remembered the milk and he remembered the honey. He knew that their defenses were very strong. But he had already earmarked his inheritance. He knew that he would find difficulties. But Joshua, through all of this, he had begun to really know and understand his God. He recognized the problems and remembered the promises. You know what? There's always going to be difficulties this side of heaven. I could use an amen right there. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's true. There always will be. But there always will be a God in heaven that has the answer. Amen. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you know you. what? Giants can be conquered. Remember David? Yeah. The enemy can be defeated. Remember Gideon? Yes. The problems can be solved. Amen. Remember God? Amen. The difficulties can uh, 
be overcome, for the Lord is on our side. Yeah. And you know what? The victory is already ours. All we have to do is claim it. So today, let's determine in our hearts that we're going to go in and possess that land, whatever land that is that God wants us to possess, that the Lord has given to each one of us. I quit with this from Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Dear brothers and sisters, this is from the New Living Testament. I'm not all that I should be, but I'm focusing all of my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain, I strain to, to reach the end of the race and receive the prize yes, for which yes, God, through yes, Christ yes, Jesus, yes. is calling us from heaven. Yes, Lord, help Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, that you are a God of promise. Yes. You're not a God of Hallelujah. defeat, but a God of victory. And Hallelujah. we set and feel victory, Lord, in our lives, Lord, for all that's coming against us. For all that's going through us, Lord. For all the all the, the that the enemy throws against us, God. For all the diseases and the, and the tumult of mind, Lord. For the heartaches that, that we experience. It's all for the glory of God. And we thank you, Father, that you are a God of promise, a God of faith, and a God of glory. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor John. That was excellent. But the one thing that struck in my mind, the one thing. When I pray, do I do all the talking? Amen. Yeah. Probably. Knowing you, yeah. <laughs> I'm mean, just say. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Somebody needed to. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, how many times? I love you too. That's on camera. I do. <laughs>
Thank you for Pastor John being here. And Lord, uh, as I should have, uh, in the praises and concerns, I should have uh, praised that you've given me such a, a wonderful life as Kathleen. Oh, Lord, yes. thank you. And Amen. Lord, uh, continue to bless her and use her uh, yes. for your use in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I love you. Thank Aww. you. <laughs> Let's wait for Pastor John to greet out at the door. And we have food in there. Uh, we have leftovers from Friday Night Benefit. And anybody like to stay? Join us. <laughs>